fell in love with a woman like that. That was. But that is that a hero? Is that a shiro? Yeah. <laughs> Fasten your seat belt. It's going to be a bumpy night. She would go into hotels in England as Kate Hepburn, but because she wore pants, no matter who she was, they wouldn't let her in the front door. So she spent years going into hotels through the uh, employee's door because she refused to not wear pants. <laughs> if you want to be a big he woman, go and be one, but not with me. I would say any woman of color in the United States today that can deal with, uh, aside from racism, sexism, and just deal with this whole white male um, attitude. Don't you know, we're talking about a revolution town. You know, I gotta tell you, most of the women who are my heroes are really ordinary, fabulous dykes that I know, you know? While they is Whoopi Goldberg because she is one of the very few black actors out here who's able to make it and she's one of the very few black women actors who's able to make it so it's probably Whoopi Goldberg. That's right Whoopi. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up, any woman I saw? <laughs> Any woman who calls herself a lesbian to me is somebody who is already claiming uh, an identity that's incredibly difficult to claim in this culture. So those are the people that I that I'm there for, and I feel like you know we have an we have an incredible um, incredible history that we really need to fight for and to claim and to move ahead. So those those are the ones that I say the ones that are really harassed, the ones that are really out there in the street. To me, um, are definitely you know people who inspire me and who keep me out here in the street. I guess for famous people, I'd go with Rosa Parks. I like her statement. Just a regular person who just said, fuck it one day. I like that. Those are the kind of people I respect. You know, she's a very powerful, intelligent woman with very um, strong ideals, dreams about change in the country and she's so well read and she speaks so beautifully and although she's handicapped now you would never know it unless you've read about it i can only say the 20th century will not close without the presence of women being keenly felt Yes, women. Um, Isadora Duncan, uh, because we seem to have the same kind of accidents with cars and scarves, I would call that a role model perhaps forced on me, but nevertheless. My mother found a garment that was supposedly owned by her at one time, which we bought. And <laughs> but she was an influence, and she was a bit of a free thinker, I guess. And what happened to the uh, garment? We still have it. <laughs> I've always admired Queen Elizabeth and wanted to be her. <laughs> well, Queen Victoria was, not, as far as fashion, she was she and the Empress Eugenie of, of France were the two main, two of the main influences in, in women's fashion for that period. I would say style-wise, definitely Grace Kelly, Coco Chanel. She's beautiful in a, in a kind of ugly way. And, um, and I remember seeing pictures of her home and of her studio, and she just seems so elegant and intelligent and on top of things. And, 
I just thought that she was so glamorous and beautiful. Joan of Arc, I thought, was really amazing. There, there was just something divine that she was after, something bigger than herself, that she was, um, that she was following, this voice of God. Risking your life, you know, taking risks, just staying close to your heart, staying close to what moves you, what drives you, and um, no matter what. Amelia Earhart, definitely Amelia Earhart, just because she disappeared and has never been found in this flyer. Again, you know, she risked, she had this thing she wanted to do. She went up there into the sky, you know, unknown. My mother. My mother was a lady ahead of her time. My mother was, uh, I don't want to say a feminist, but she was a liberated woman. Who inspired me? My crazy mother. My mother is very special because she raised all her children to become something. She raised all five of us herself, and I always admired her independence. You know, one day she just came in the room and literally picked me up and threw me against the wall and said, you have to go out of the house. And I, you know, I was crying. I said, I can't. People are staring at me. I was a mess. And she said, well, you have to, and I will go with you. But, you know, and so we took a walk. And so we went back to the house. And she said, see, it's no big deal. I think Odetta sees women as uh, being saviors, saving, always saving something, saving an infant or rescuing somebody and saving them. And you know, within 15 minutes, probably the first three rows of the fraternity officers walked out. I mean, they literally got up and walked out. It was so offensive to their sensibilities. And the guy I was with, it's like, you know, they had an intermission. And he said, you want to go now? I said, well, what, are you kidding? <laughs> you go, I'm staying. Oh, yes, OK, Joan Baez. Hers and played the thing. Because she not only sings the music, she believes in it. Yeah. Mama Cass. And tell me about Mama Cass. Why was she such an important person? Uh, because for heavyweight women, she got up there and did her thing and didn't let anybody bother her. You know, Yoko met John. She knew she wanted John. John was married. I mean, that didn't stop Yoko. I don't know, Jane Fonda, she's pretty, pretty popular. Tell me about Jane. What is it about Jane that you are attracted to? She's straightforward. She's honest. She speaks her mind. <laughs> That's the most important. <laughs> but there's few women in history that really made everyone just go like, women shouldn't act like that. Total heroes. lot to give. Plus she's just so sexy. <laughs> I guess he dignified objects. So you have this fascinating intellectual twist on every kind of like can opener 
or, you know, I mean, the bottle racks, the bicycles, all of that kind of stuff. So for the work, the kind of artwork I did, it was uh, definitely based right on good old Marcel. Big hero, incredible hero, Frida Kale, Madonna. I love her, I hate her. I love to hate her. I love Madonna because she, because money makes her beautiful. <laughs> well, her beauty and, you know, it just seemed like her life was full of a lot of uh, fantasy and stuff that I'd be interested in. She used her gift to get her way through life. Dolly Parton and Cher and Madonna, I think those women have really uh, been pretty incredible to our society and I have a lot of respect for them. Madonna! <laughs> She's, uh, she's really fucked up. Okay, defend Madonna. Madonna is exactly who she wants to be. I think she's just like, sometimes, some days she's happy, and some days she's probably very sad, and she feels horrible. No matter what you think of what she's doing, I mean, she's still kind of good to look up to, in a sense that, I mean, she'll do anything that she wants to, you know, and she'll just show up, but she's really aggressive. And I mean, if nothing else, you can just look up to her for that. She's not afraid to do her own thing or something. I mean, she doesn't, like Sadie said, she doesn't care like what if she wants to do it and she's comfortable with that, then that's good. Are you all comfortable with the pictures you saw in Vanity Fair and, and do you know about the ones coming out? Yeah, yeah I have to They were even better. <laughs> what do you mean they're even worse? They're not, I mean, they're more productive. Yeah. It's really sad. I think she's really dangerous for kids. May West. Marilyn, but you know what? Not really. Scratch Marilyn. She's too much a victim. Somebody you admire, somebody you wanted to be of. I'm trying to remind my son of my husband. Maybe he can think of someone I've said. No, not that I can think of. Um, not really. No? No. Nobody. I'd be sad, but no. Okay, you can't think of me, but that's okay. Thanks, thanks okay. for your time. Sorry. Take care. The take of that would be calling you acting, so... It's very hard to be a woman who thinks in our society and beyond that, like as a woman artist, a woman who ex not only thinks but expresses her ideas, like that's not encouraged. The only thing I saw was that you were either, you know, uh, unattractive like my mother and you got ignored, or you were this sort of um, uh, everything to every man and you were somebody. And that's the only way that I knew to to be somebody. That was the only um, uh, message that I ever got. Oh, heroines? Yeah. Don't have no heroines, I have heroes. Yeah. Yeah, when I was about 10. <laughs> I was about 10, I liked Alice Cooper and Black Sabbath, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now there is no heroes. His face and his physical, his body, yeah. the way he fights. Yeah. He's just good to eat, that's all. Good to eat? Yeah. Tom Cruise, I guess. <laughs> I really don't have one. No? No. So when you're a little girl, you never like idolized any... Uh, I don't think so. Nobody from movies, nobody from uh, rock and roll, nothing. No, not really. And I'm in... I've been real aware lately of uh, not having really great role models, positive role models in my life. I'm really influenced by all women filmmakers. I think it's pretty incredible when women make films and they do it um, on their own and it's their film and they're, they're able to do it and they're, they're able to get credit for it. I think that's my biggest problem with filmmaking is that no matter how much you do, men always get the credit for it.
basically, my that my idea of hero has changed to being um, from something that is like a comic book thing or a worship thing to almost um, a peer that I that I am inspired by. I never had like heroes like movies or something like that. They were always personal. I always knew them. They would write me letters. She came to my dance recitals when they used to dance. Yes, I took tap. <laughs> so I think that she, Mrs. Rogers, uh -huh. PS 87 in the Bronx. Her husband goes out and works. Uh -huh. And he brings home a salary, which was very low at those in those times. Right. And the women had to make those salaries stretch. Right. And they had to make extra money, you know, to cover the family. So that we'd never be without proper clothing, proper food, proper shelter. So, and my father was my best friend, really, growing up. Also my father, and my older sister and I, she's handicapped and I'm looking after her. Well, you, you always need somebody in your life that both um, understands you thoroughly and likes you, anyhow. The people that I, I really get, seems like I get the most from now presently are um, my friends, my women friends. She always gave me a great deal of strength and um, I went and visited her when she got sick in the hospital and it wasn't like visiting someone who was sick because her spirit was so present you are the most that you can create magic that magic would and like magic is just creating change smoke that cigarette? Yeah. Why do you stay in the picture? Uh, he's, <laughs> he's gonna let us know why all advertised Virginia Slims. Right. <laughs> or do a cigarette commercial at the same time. <laughs> okay, now I would um let me get one more adjustment here. I am sliding down this down swing here. Okay, let me get your names. Tell me your names please. Who? Either, Both, one. either one of us. Mildred Medaw. Tell me again. Mildred Medaw. Okay, Mildred, and then your yeah. name is? Mildred. Evelyn oh, Santangelo. Okay, uh, Evelyn and Mildred, tell me, take Still turns and tell me uh, who your uh, role models have been. Uh, what women have you looked up to uh, throughout your years, say from, you can think back to uh, when you were I can't think kid. back that far. Uh -huh. 